All right, so this is going to be part two of infinite sequence practice. Okay, so we're just going to be working on finding a formula for a sub n when given an infinite sequence. And our first problem here, our infinite sequence, is one third, one sixth, one ninth, one twelfth, and so on. Okay, so really, I mean, there's only one difference here, and that's that you know you see that we're going up by multiples of three on the bottom. Okay, so this is kind of the same thing as just you know, three times one, three times two, three times three, right? So you see that as the terms increase, right, we're having that number that we're multiplying three by, and that's increasing two, okay? So we can actually just write this sequence as eight sub n equals one over three n, all right? And that's why, so, so that works, right? We, for our first term, right, we have one over three times one, and that's one third. For our second term, we have one over three times two, and that's one sixth, right? So it works out. And that's because we found, we seen that the denominator is going up by multiples of three, okay? So that's our first problem. What about for this sequence here? We have three, negative one, one third, negative one ninth, and one twenty seventh, okay? So first off, we see that negative one, okay? That's on the even terms, that's on two and four, so we know <clears throat> at least that a sub n is going to be a negative one times not n, because that would be for the odd terms, but we're gonna have to do n minus one, you can do n plus one, whatever you want, okay? So that's cool. Now, what about the, is there anything else we need to include for the numerator? It really doesn't look like it, because it's just one every time after this first three right here. Okay, and, and on the bottom here, okay, you see a three. Okay, you see a three, and that's being squared to get nine, and the three would be to the third to get 27, okay? So at this point, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, I need this three to be to a power. Okay, but what power is it supposed to be? Because this isn't the first term, okay? This is the third term, and that's just where we're getting a three. Well... What we have to do here is, well, we can just adjust it by putting an n here and then adding or subtracting something. So, for instance, this is the third term, as I said, and we're getting 3 to the first power in the denominator. So that means that we could just do n minus 2 to get 3 minus 2, and that will give us 1, which will give us a 3 in the denominator. Okay. You can also see that this will work for this negative 1 and the 3 because, let's say this first term, okay, we'll get a 3 to the negative 1 because we'll have a 3 to the 1 minus 2. That's going to give us 3 to the negative 1 in the denominator to the 1 minus 2. Okay, I'll just write that out, I guess. And we'll get a negative 1 to the uh, for 1 minus 1. So we're going to get a 1 over 3 to the negative 1, which is equal to 3. Now, we're not going to be done yet here because we can actually simplify this by making a 3 to the n minus 1 here, and then we can combine that with the negative 1 that's on the top, and that's also to the n minus 1 power. What I mean by that is we can split this up. We have a negative 1 to the n minus 1, and we split that 3 up to be a 3 to the n minus 1 and a 3 to the negative 1. Using what we know about exponent properties, this is true. Because when we multiply these two, these two pieces right here, we have to add the exponents. When we add the exponents, we get n minus 2, right? We have an n minus 1 minus 1, which is n minus 2, which is that. Okay, what does this allow us to do? Well, we know that 3 to the negative 1 in the denominator is just going to be a 3 on top. And then we just have a negative 1 third here because we're just going to combine this this negative one and the three because they're both to the n minus one power. So we just put this to the n minus one power. And there you go. We have our answer. Okay. So using those exponent properties, it may be a little bit tricky. It, you know, it may be hard to see at times, but just know that, you know, that will show up and that's going to be something that you're going to need to do to simplify your answer from something like this to something a little nicer looking like that. Okay. So we're going to be doing more examples like that in the next video. So I will see you then. 
So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series, the explanation video for sequences, and the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon!